Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching my video where today we're gonna to be talking about arithmetic sequences. So the very first thing we need to know is what's an arithmetic sequence. And an arithmetic sequence is simply a pattern of numbers that is adding or subtracting by the same amount. So for example here, and I know it's kind of twisted, you may have to turn your head, four, six, eight, 10, that's an arithmetic sequence, it's adding by two, and what we would say is that the common difference, D, the amount that it's increasing by, is a positive 2. Here, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, those values are decreasing by 2. So I would say the common difference, D, is a negative 2. Negative 5, negative 2, 1, 4, 7, that's increasing by 3. So I would say the common difference is 3. Now here's the formula for an arithmetic sequence. A sub n where n is the number of the term you're trying to solve for, is equal to a sub 1. a sub 1 just simply means whatever the first term in the sequence is, plus n minus 1, so that term you're trying to solve for. Notice it shows up in this formula twice. Here, though, it's just notation. Here, it's actually part of the calculation. Minus 1. And then that difference is multiplied by whatever the common difference d is. Now, this looks kind of crazy at first. Then we're thinking, where does this even come from? But let's take a look. Here's what we're going to do. It says, given the sequence, write the equation for the nth term. Now, what's really nice about writing an equation for an nth term, it means that you get to leave n in the formula. And so I really just need to know my a sub 1, and I need to know my common difference d. So if I give you the sequence 1, 10, 19, 28, the a sub 1 for this sequence is 1. It's the first term. The common difference d would be whatever I see it's increasing by. So here I see it's increasing by 9, so my d is a positive 9. Now, here is that formula. a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. I get to now substitute in 1 for a sub 1 and 9 for d. Now when I do that, I'm writing this, equa this equation for the nth term. When you get to write an equation for the nth term, it means wherever you see n, you just leave it there. You don't need to plug anything in. Um, I'm going to clean this equation up a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 9. So if I distribute 9 to n minus 1, I get n minus, uh, 9n minus 9 with that 1 in front. And then this is what my final equation would look like after I combine like terms. This would be the equation for the nth term given the sequence. Let's try the next one. 13, 10, 7, 4. The first term of the sequence is 13. The common difference d here is that it's subtracting by 3, so d is negative 3. Here is my formula. I go ahead, I substitute in my 13 for my a sub 1 and my negative 3 for d. I'm going to now distribute that negative 3, so negative 3 times n, negative 3 times negative 1, which gives me 13 minus 3n plus 3. I'm going to go ahead, combine my like terms, and it becomes negative 3n plus 16. Last one. My a sub 1 is negative 5. My common difference d is 3. I get to go ahead, substitute my a sub 1 in for uh, my negative 5 in for that a sub 1. My d is 3. I'm going to go ahead, distribute that 3, and then combine my like terms. That's it. Those are my equations. And again, when it says to write the equation for the nth term, that means you should have n in your final answer. So now we're going to take a look at what it means to then do the next step. So it says once an equation for the nth term is written, solving for the nth term is found by substituting the value for n into the equation. So if I gave you the sequence 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and I said to you write the equation for the nth term, we would plug in a 5 for my a sub 1. We see it's increasing by 2, so my common difference here is 2. And let's say I already did all the distributing and combining like terms, and I get this a sub n equals 2n plus 3. If I then said to you, find the hundredth term of the sequence, what that means is every place I see n, which is two places here, I substitute that hundred in. So a sub 100, which means the hundredth term. It doesn't mean a times 100, it's not 100a, it's just simply a sub 100. So this is saying the hundredth term of the sequence is equal to two times, I plug in that same value for n, 2 times 100 plus 3. So the hundredth term of the sequence, a sub 100, is equal to 203. 
So now, if I go back to this, these equations that I created here from these sequences, and now, I now say to you, find the 22nd term of each sequence. I would take this equation that I created, and I would substitute 22 in for where I see n. So here, if I go ahead and I take those equations from up top here, the ones that we already started to create, and I go ahead and I plug 22 in, I'm really just doing my basic simplifying, and notice what the result is. a sub 22 equals 190. So that's saying the 22nd term of the sequence is 190. If I wanted to find the 22nd term here of that middle sequence, okay, I'm just substituting that in. Notice the a sub 22 stays the whole time. I'm not changing it. I'm not doing anything else with it. And then here, if I plug in a 22, I'm just doing my calculations and evaluations on the right-hand side. The left-hand side just says so a sub 22. Very easy. So now the last thing I need to show you is what if I told you, hey, here's the sequence 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Which number term of the sequence is 97? And you may be saying to yourself, okay, well, I can count that out, right? So 5, then 7, then 9. But do you really want to go all the way to 97 and figure out which term of the sequence has a value of 97? No. So instead, the way we solve it, we solve for that number term is we substitute 97 in for the entire a sub n value. So if 97 gets substituted in for a sub n, and I solve for n, and I end up getting 47, that would mean the 47th term of that sequence would actually be 97. So if I take a look here and I show you, and I said to you which term of the sequence is 172, and let's say I had this formula that I created from above, I would then plug in 172 in for a sub n, and then solve for n, and I would learn that 172 is actually the 20th term of that sequence. Okay, again, which term of the sequence is negative 29? I would take that formula that we created, plug in negative 29 in for a sub n, and then solve. The solving point at this point is very easy for us because we've already dealt with our equations. And then last one, which term of the sequence is 37? So again, solving it. I hope this was an easy video for you to go through. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.